Our next section has us solving some polynomial equations in a specific form. They're called factored form. We're going to use something that's we call the zero product property. What that tells us, if I have two numbers that multiplied together equals zero, so if a times b equals zero, I know either a equals zero, b equals zero, or both are equal to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that to solve some polynomial equations. For example, a polynomial equation that I'm going to put in what's called factored form is something that looks like y equals, we're going to go 2x plus 4 times x minus 3. So to solve an equation, That is asking us to find the x-intercepts on the graph. Basically, it's telling us, and we should know, to find any intercept in an equation, to find the x-intercepts, we put a 0 in for y. So for me to solve this equation, I'm going to put a 0 in for y. And notice I have a multiplication problem whose answer is zero. So from here, I know that 2x plus 4 has to equal zero, or x minus 3 has to equal zero. I solve both of these equations and I have my solutions. So I'm going to subtract 4. So 2x equals negative 4. Divide by 2. x is equal to negative 2. On this one, I'm just going to add the 3 to both sides. I get x equals 3. I have two answers. x equals negative 2 is one of the answers. x equals 3 is another one of those answers. And I can apply that to more than two, pro uh, more than two numbers being multiplied together. I could have a third factor or a fourth factor or a fifth factor. And we're going to see... I'll do an example of one that has other factors in there like that. I want to point out the work that we're doing to get our answer is always going to be the same. I take the opposite of whatever I'm adding or subtracting and then divide by the number in front of the letter. Okay? I move it over and divide. Move it over and divide. Okay? I'm going to do several examples that I'm going to do some little edge cases. So I want to solve the following. Okay, I'm going to have two answers. Set the first factor equal to zero. Set the second factor equal to zero. Add three. Subtract one. Divide by 4, there's my two answers. Okay, I do not need to see the inner, I do need to see you write this step out, and I need to see you write the answers out. I do not need to see inter intermediate steps. Okay, you guys are sophomores. I expect you to be able to solve linear equations in your head. That's why we covered them in detail during... 8th grade, and integrated math 1. So I'm going to do a weird one here. I still have a multiplication problem whose answer is 0. So let's set each part equal to 0. Well, I've already got that answer. And then subtract 5, and I get P equals negative 5. I get my second answer. So this is a factor. It's just that there's it's got a plus zero there. 
And let's do the third little edge case. Um, I'm going to do 4K times negative 3K plus 2 equals 0. Again, I have a multiplication problem whose answer is 0. So I get 4K is equal to 0. Divide by 4, I get K is equal to 0. So anytime you have any number multiplied by the variable outside, it's always going to be that variable equals 0. That's my first answer. Second answer is negative 3K plus 2 equals 0. Crack the 2. Negative 3K equals negative 2. Divide by negative 3. K is equal to a positive 2 thirds. So if it is already in factored form, which is what this lesson's about, and I ask you to solve the equation, that is how you are going to end up doing it. So that's gonna, we're gonna go over and do some IXL on those. And we're gonna concentrate on solving quadratics using the zero product property. The second one will be the second part of the lesson that you'll see in Google Classroom. So solve a quadratic using zero product property. It says solve for J. And again, if there's no number in front of these letters, it's just the opposite of what is ever in the parentheses. So it's going to be negative 3 and negative 4. Oh, I've got to move my keyboard back over so I can type. Negative 3, negative 4. That's a number by itself out in front, so that one's zero. This one's going to become a positive three. Negative five, positive nine. Negative nine, positive eight. Zero, negative five. Negative 5, positive 2 sevenths. Negative 5, 2 over 7. 4, negative 3. Zero, because it's out in front by itself, and negative 9. One, negative 4. Negative 4 over 3, positive 2 over 3. Only thing that would be a little weird on these fractions, if you could simplify it, you'd have to simplify it. 0 because it's out in front. And positive 7 over 4. Uh, 2 minutes and 2 seconds to get to 70. So again, the work isn't very difficult. Um, it's just making sure you get it up and get it done. There is another part for section 2.4, um, but it, that will be in a separate video.